Yo, why does this dude keep talking about sex and gender? This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. Hey, all y'all, welcome back to another uh, Food for Thought. So, today I'm going to talk about a couple of things, but I'm going to spend most of the time going back into this topic of sex and gender that seems to have so many of you hopping and bopping in the comments section. So I'm going to keep going and, you know, again, I'm going to keep apologizing. It's not a subject that I know a lot about, but I'm, I'm enjoying learning from you about it. So this is, we're kind of flipping the script, script a little bit. And instead of me bringing you a ton of information, I'm going to like throw some ideas and some questions out to you. And hopefully you're going to be able to answer them. Now to give you a little bit of feedback into why I've been on this topic. Uh, about a week ago, I was making a video just talking specifically about science, and I was trying to um, relate the idea of sex and how sex is more fluid than people, you know, claim it is. People seem to look at sex as, you know, this one particular set of organs and the, this other particular set of organs that work together to have this one particular function. But according to, you know, science, there's a lot more to it than that. And in that video, I, I kept using the word gender to talk about, um, you know, sex, and and that was a huge mistake. And it wasn't until I went back and looked at the video that I realized that I had done that. And some people had commented, but hadn't been really clear on what it was that I'd said. And I really hadn't had time to go back and look at the video immediately. And so I was really confused for a couple of days. But when I looked back, I saw that yeah, I had actually used the word gender when I should have been talking about sex. Although um, I'm not an expert on that topic at all anyway. In fact, I wasn't even, you know, using any particular terms other than using the word gender. But um, that said, it was, you know, it was a mistake. And I'm hoping that there weren't any hugely negative impacts. And if anybody can think of some, uh, you know, negative impacts to, you know, misusing those terms in the way that I was using them, please do let me know. Um, and I apologize if there were. Uh, again, I just, you know, I'd love to know what that is. Because I'm going to dig in and I'm going to talk about how um, specifically um, those things may be more related than people are, you know, just necessarily willing to talk about. And, you know, in some ways they're, you know, not related at all. So um, this fast that I've been on, I ended up going for 24 days having no solid food whatsoever. The 23 of the 24 days I was doing what you know, uh, I've called the master cleanse, but it's just a fast where the only, um, you know, all of my, you know, nutrients and calories are coming from a concoction of lemon, dark maple syrup and cayenne pepper. And yesterday I added, oh, well, actually two days ago, I added some orange juice to that that was watered down. And then uh, yesterday I had a bunch of orange juice and then I had uh, at night I had celery and went through a lot of celery like a whole bunch of celery and um, that was great and today last night when I was coming home I just saw this at a fruit stand a 24-hour fruit stand and I said I have to have that and so in fact as soon as this video is in the can I'm gonna cut this open and start eating that while I'm doing the editing also, um, right now, continuing with um, my, you know, having tea. So today I'm having, this is, um, Tea Pigs is the brand. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's Tea Pigs Lazy Days. And this particular flavor is lemon and ginger. So I'm hoping you can see that. And I was looking at it and I, was, I had some of my questions about the packaging because they have this kind of, I saw a little bit of plastic sort of on the front here, but I wasn't sure if it was plastic all the way through. And it turns out that it's in, you know, the whole thing's in a plastic bag. Um, it says recycled on the packaging, but you know, I don't know. And then in terms of it being fair trade, I'm not sure. I probably won't buy this brand again, but they do come in these kind of little cute little um, tea pyramids that are biodegradable, but it smells really nice. And I'm about to get into that with you as I go. Also, you know, I, I told you guys that I was really disappointed that the 
uh, House passed the um, this new Republican health care bill to repeal, replace Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. And I was explaining that, you know, they didn't really have the numbers and it looks like um, there were 217 votes for the bill on the Republican side with 20 Republicans um, voting up really against their party because it was really a split along par party lines. So we had 20 Republicans voting against it and one, uh, 193 Democrats voting against the bill. So it was 217 votes for and 213. It was really, really a narrow margin. And for a bill to pass, um, knowing that half of the you know country's representatives weren't for it, to me, seems a little, you know, we're turning politics into, you know, a sporting event. So I'm just really, un un you know, displeased with that. Apparently, there's still some hope that it won't pass in the Senate. So uh, if you uh, want to, you know, if you want to see this bill struck down, now's the time to get on the horn and call your senator and put some pressure on some folks to vote against the bill. And we'll see what happens. So I dug in a little bit more and did some more research and I want to thank so many of you for sending me resources and I'm going to share a lot of the resources that were shared with me um, in this in, in the uh, description section of this video, but I just want to say I, you know, I went uh, at far and wide. The American Psych Psychological Social um, Association, um, an organization called Interactions for Gender Justice, um, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations uh, chimed in. There were links that were sent, contrapoints uh, to the contrapoints video that was amazing. There was another video that was shared uh, on by uh, Cecilia Hart. Um, it's Pigeon Pagonis talking at the University of Chicago about being intersex. Bruce Webb shared a Wikipedia, a Wikipedia article on intersex and human rights. Um, there's a fact sheet from the United Nations for LGBT equality, free and equal on intersex and um, the Institute of Development, uh, the Institute of Development Studies of the University of Su uh, Sussex. Um, and they are the folks who do the Interactions for Gender Justice Project. And I also uh, refer to the Intersex Society of North America. And so, as you can tell, I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking about what it means to be intersex. But at first, I want to start by just defining um, the terms, just according to Webster's Dictionary, right? So that we can have um, a baseline for our understanding of these things. So sex, according to Webster's Online, is either of the two major forms of individuals uh, that occur in many species and that are distinguished respectively as female or male, especially on the basis of their reproductive organs and structures. So that's the definition of sex. And the definition of gender, according to Webster's, is the behavioral, cultural, or psychological traits typically associated with one sex. So I found those definitions really interesting and the uh, 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 gender obviously is what you know right away seems to be the more complex issue yes because it has to deal with culture it has to do with behavior that is either chosen or coerced it has to do with our psychology and all of those things are extremely complex topics on their own before we talk about the way that they impact our understanding of of gender and um i'm gonna try not to use you know the m word and the f word that much because i think that those tend to complicate the issue i think that there's an understanding of roles that are played and um some of those roles have to do um with being responsible for the reception and the gestation of life and other roles have to do more with sort of like the dissemination with the you know the planting the seeds right for life those are kind of the the, the basic roles and sometimes uh, uh, those roles can be seen as more 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 or less passive and another of those roles tends to be seen as more or less aggressive 
And so I really want to get away from the idea of one of those things being associated specifically with one sex or other, because they don't have to be. Again, those things are cultural. And what I would like us to start to do in this conversation is move away from uh, the distinct actions, distinct um, occurrences, right? Uh, experiences as belonging to one or the other, but uh, more being attributed to one or the other when we know that they don't have to be, right? That is, for the most part, arbitrary. But when it comes to sex, people tend to feel pretty comfortable with the idea of that being black and white, that there's, you know, this one sex that serves this one role function, and then there's this other sex that serves this other role function, and primarily around reproduction, yes? But that seems to, um, you know, not, it seems not to take into account the, this idea of intersex. Um, however, you know, Webster's Dictionary, even, it says either of the two major forms of individuals that occur in many species, which leads me to believe that even Webster's is leaving space for um, more than two. There are two that are major, but then there are these others that may be, you know, less, uh, less, uh, uh, less common, right? So just to stop thinking about these things as because Webster's gives us, you know, this idea of two of them being major or our understanding of sex seems to fall in these very clear categories of one and another doesn't necessarily mean that that is how they occur in nature. And that isn't how they occur in nature. And this idea of intersex um, comes into play. And now intersex, according to the Intersex Society of North, North America, is a general term used for a variety of conditions in which a person is born with a reproductive or sexual anatomy that doesn't seem to fit the typical definitions of female or male. And um, there's a Dr. Anne Fausto Sterling, uh, who is a Brown University um, professor emerita um, and fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, who's the leading expert in biology and gender development, uh, who is really, who has been kind of, uh, really dispelling a lot of the myths around, you know, sex that say that it's this one or other thing. And according to Dr. Fausto Sterling, close to 2% of the population is intersex or displays the conditions of intersex that are in, in conditions that are intersex conditions. And keeping that in mind, it really, um, it kind of blew my mind to, first of all, learn that what we what might have been thought of as something that is very rare in nature and certainly in human beings is something that is occurring in you know one out of a hundred or two out of a hundred individuals so when you're in a room full when you're in a anytime you're in a theater the chances are that there are going to be um you know one or more people in that space depending on how many people are there that are intersex or that have conditions that are considered intersex and uh the american uh the american uh society for i believe it is the uh, the intersex society of north america um has a chart that lists the particular conditions um that are considered intersex conditions and um how often they occur and you know some of the most rare conditions may happen in one out of a hundred thousand individuals but you know again they say you know uh, they're as 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 um often as one in a hundred births that and this is the total number of people whose bodies differ from standard um, male or female. And I've talked often to you about the fact that, you know, as I was developing through puberty and even now, uh, my body tends to display um, uh, features that are, you know, n not necessarily male, although I read, uh, you know, to the general public as, you know, very male, I'm, you know, very tall and pretty, you know, pretty masculine looking. Um, 
until you, you know, look at the full picture and then you start to see that there are things that are not, you know, not so in tune with that. And so to think about, you know, why is it that we feel it is necessary to gender sex? Because that's basically what we're doing is we're taking something that is also fluid, like gender, and we're, <laughs> you know, we're assigning a gender. We're assigning gender to certain organs. We're assigning gender to certain biological functions. And from there, we expand into the behaviors that might go along with those functions. Who is doing what to whom? during, let's say, the sexual act. And we're not talking about making love. We're talking about the act that, you know, results in, you know, the sharing of seed and, you know, reproduction. And those things, if we are taking those things and we are applying a gender to them, um, why then does it become an issue <laughs> to um, conflate the two? Because in some ways we are conflating the two when we are imposing one on the other. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that when we use the terms male and female that we have to be applying any roles to them other than, you know, the simple, you know, there is a particular, you know, when we think about, the, you know, the birds and the bees and, you know, simple things like that. But it's still, you know, it doesn't take into account, for example, that there are certain individuals that may have certain organs that um, maybe don't function in the way that um, the same male or female organs that look similar function. Right. And so, for example, there, you know, may be males who, you know, aren't capable of, um, you know, inseminating, you know, a, you know, female. And there are females who, you know, aren't able to, you know, carry children to term or, you know, who may, whose, whose ovaries may not function in the way that ovaries may, you know, typically function. Right. So we, so that, so that uh, puts a certain, you know, a certain stigma on those who may or may not have those characteristics who aren't able to fulfill those functions. Uh, it also uh, doesn't take into account that there may be individuals who are, you know, walking around, you know, with uh, displaying certain characteristics. And so now I'm not talking about sex, now I'm talking about gender. And so there may be um, behaviors that culturally are accepted to be or, you know, assumed to belong to one gender or other that may be taken on by an individual who sees themselves not as the gender that they might be, you know, that, that their behavior might be signaling, if that's clear. And so it gets very, very, very complicated very quickly when we start to say that one thing like behaviors denote gender or psycho like psychology denotes uh, gender or culture um, assigns gender. These things may occur, but they don't occur in any way that I think is reliable enough for them to look at that definition and really consider it any type of full understanding of what those words mean. So that's where I am with it right now. And obviously I still have a lot of reading to do and a lot of studying to do. Uh, and again, I will, and you know, thank you to all of you who were willing to um, offer resources in the comments below and to those who agreed with things that I've had to say in the past or disagreed with things I've had to say in the past. Thank you for your comments and continued engagement in this discussion. It's not simple. <laughs> so, um, wait, before I go, I should shout out my own show. So for those of you who are in Brooklyn or in New York City, please do um, go to the website, uh, redhooktheater.org. That's red, R-E-D-H-O-O-K-T-H-E-A-T-E-R dot o-r-g and uh learn about my show that's opening it's called ready set go race and it's going to be previewing on wednesday the 10th of may uh, with a free performance and then opening on thursday the 11th and running through this sunday a very very short run so catch it while you can 
please. All right. <laughs> now that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself.